Let's kick off with game one. Miami at Boston. Celtics playing man as Jaime Jaquez brings the ball up. And keep an eye on this Kevin Love, DeLon Wright, and Duncan Robinson cluster by the near sideline. It's set up to look like this condensed double pin down for Robinson. Robinson fakes running off those screens to get Drew out of position and then cuts to the basket, which leads to the underrated factor here, the communication on the switch between Drew and Pritchard and just how quickly it occurs. Yeah, so this is a twirl action where you set it up like a pin down and then one of the screeners cuts off of that pin down. And it's a nice little play design and it kind of gets them what against a normal team would be a mismatch. But we have Drew Holiday, so posting up our point guard isn't going to get you very far. And then PP and Tatum have a bit of a miscommunication, but Al Horford just like flies out. Great closeout. Sam Hauser flies out. Great closeout. The Heat are scrambling. They finally find Duncan Robinson, who has to kind of take a prayer in the corner that he doesn't even get off shot clock violation. Miami doesn't have the shot creators, but they are as good as anyone with their off ball work. So many screens and twists, like your communication just has to be on point. Throughout the series, we're playing drop a lot of the time, but it feels like we're also comfortable just if someone feels someone get caught on a screen, like Drew kind of gets caught. Tatum's like, okay, switch it. And as he said, not a mismatch when it comes to Drew Holiday. Tatum and Pritchard kind of miscommunicate, but Hauser and Horford do a good job kind of playing two on three. Highsmith just has to shoot that shot. Not as comfortable in game one. He probably shoots that if it was game three, game two, I mean. They recover it, and then Tatum does a good job with the off ball to force a loose ball, and Pritchard's still fighting his way to make Robinson take the shot clock violation. Celtics on offense now, and this is a baseline out of bounds play with the Heat in a 3-2 zone. Hauser is way out there on the catch which immediately stretches out the zone. We start to swing the ball, all elite shooting options there. Drew glances at JT for a second, forcing Jaime Jaquez out of position, gets a little bit of dribble penetration, which just freaks out the Miami defense enough to pull it away from Sam Hauser. This is like a cool little play design here against the zone where you just go five out and you can swing it around. And then Drew does a really good job just driving into the teeth of that zone. And Hauser, I feel like we talk about it every week. He's just so good at these like subtle relocations when the defense turns turns around and he just kind of drops down to the corner, gives Drew a perfect passing angle. Boom, you know it's going in when it's Sammy Buckets. Yeah, love it. Like, you can just pass the ball around the perimeter with this team and probably find an open look, but it's so much more effective when someone just probes a little bit into the middle. DeLon Wright comes down to take the drive. He's still kind of holding Pritchard, who's spacing really well. But Horford reads this thing, like, from the beginning. Robinson's fronting him because he's worried about Horford getting post position, but Horford knows he's just going to set that screen so Robinson can't get back out to Hauser. Easy money. Game two in Boston. Celtics on defense. Firstly, Drew leaves DeLon Wright to cut off any possibility of Miami getting to the rim, but this is an Al Horford sequence. This is all about Al Horford, baby. He's going to switch onto Duncan Robinson while Hauser trails over the screen, and Horford just contains Robinson long enough to force him into kind of a shitty pass. Hauser does a great job getting back and disrupting the pass, but then we're out in transition. Same two guys. Al runs the floor. Hauser runs the floor straight to the corner. House money. But wait, there's more. Next play, sideline out of bounds. Horford is on Highsmith, so he just kind of sags off and patrols the paint like a fucking wolf. So he's there to greet Harkes Jr. like a gentleman as he comes off the screen, strips the ball, and if that's not enough, heat ball, Horford locks up Duncan Robinson and forces a shot clock violation. Beautiful. Tatum does a really good job. He's aware in transition, cuts off Highsmith immediately. Him and Hauser have a nice interchange on the pick and roll, and that's sort of a little miscommunication between Sam and Al, but Al does a really good job. He's just decisive, jumps out on Robinson, allows Hauser to switch it and get back and then Horford patience in transition lets Hauser follow him on the trail hits him with the pass and then on this inbound look at Sam Hauser boom knocks the ball away that mucks up the offense it makes things difficult for the heat and then they just kind of get into sort of some screening action but it doesn't matter because Horford's there in his drop coverage just swatting the ball away like you can't even try this dude man like he's too good <laughs> and then finally again he's on high Smith there's another interchange they switch it easily it's really easy to make the decision to switch when the shot clock is low because Horford doesn't have to defend in space for more than a couple seconds. And of course, he does a great job, forces Robinson baseline. He can't even get the shot away. Yeah, what do you want? Al Horford has it for you. Is it defending in the drop? Is it running the floor? Getting a mismatch on Robinson? Defense kind of starts to scramble down, finds Hauser, galloping up and down. Oh, do you need him to anchor your defense? Sure, he, he can play, play some drop, get the deflection on Jaime Jaquez. And you know when he gets Duncan Robinson 
and I can almost feel Al Horford counting down four, three, two, one. And he knows when he gets to one, as soon as Duncan Robinson drives baseline, that when he makes that move, he's not going to have time to get it off. And you can just tell Al knows it doesn't have it for uh, for Robinson. Finally, a poor Zingas defensive sequence from game three. And it's all about his defense on Bam at a bio here. He's tracking Bam perfectly. He doesn't come out beyond his effective shooting range. And then it's long Latvian limbs up in the air, doesn't leave his feet. Beautiful contest, forces the miss. Unfortunately, Tatum screws up here and gives up the offensive rebound, but it doesn't matter. KP just completely blows up the hero bam pick and roll, forces the turnover. And then a few possessions later, this is a huge change from game one and two. Bam, pump fake bonanza. KP stays down on all of them, remains in position and forces the miss. Yeah, I think it's interesting that Bam is like starts this first possession off kind of as the point guard and hero comes over like he wants to set a screen, maybe run an inverted pick and roll or get into the handoff game. Bam waves him off, says, I'm taking this dude. And he does not. <laughs> Unfortunately, Tatum does not box out. And then on the ensuing inbounds, it's just great help, great recognition from Porzingis. Like he's just always in the right spot. You know, you can sag off Bam really far, blow up some of these like off ball screening actions. And then Hero gets downhill. Tatum reaches in from the corner help and kind of makes Hero uncomfortable. And then he's going up against KP, doesn't stand a chance. And yeah, the perfection. At least we haven't had to deal with Bam and Jimmy Butler taking 7,000 pump fakes a, a possession, but just stay down, stay tall, make Bam shoot over you. And if he makes it, he makes it and he doesn't this time. Yeah, underrated part of the play, Derek White trying to impound the inbounds ball like his life depends on it, just jumping up and down. And then I love the at the end, KP playing drop on Hero, gives Hero just enough space where Hero feels like he can get up on the backboard. Then those Latvian limbs come over, completely shut down the space. Hero's already left his feet and Drew is like right Right there to take any dump off to Hero. Hero throws the giant turnover. The chin pubes guy throws the giant turnover <laughs> back towards the other direction. I lo it really felt like uh, KP solved the band problem by the end of this game. Stay down, take the bumps, contest with Latvian limbs.